I'm Steph Morris and welcome to my YouTube channel. As you can tell, I'm very excited because me and Nate have just started an excited trip to Everest Base Camp. Welcome to Nepal. This is the craziest city I've ever been to. Me, yeah. It's uh, pretty sketchy if I'm being honest. Namaste. Namaste. Every step takes a review. I'm just going well into the 5,000 meter zone. This is unbelievable. So after our climatisation yesterday, we're moving on from Namche Bazaar to a place called Forche. It's about 14 kilometres and hopefully on the way, we'll meet someone who's climbed Everest 14 times. And done Snowden 14 times. <laughs> <laughs> Derek's a big fan of the vlogs already, I think. <laughs> I certainly am. So it was another day hiking through the beautiful Himalayas. And what better way to start than with a good laugh with the locals? How old are you? Uh, 19. <laughs> 19? <laughs> Tough paper, <laughs> Arnold. <laughs> Thank you. And all the way down there is the bridge we crossed two days ago. That was about 500 metres lower than where we are now. So behind me, you see Anna Duffman, Lotse, and Everest appear again for us. Couldn't have asked for a better morning. It's mental though. In comparison, Lotse, which is the mountain in the middle, Abu Dhabi Lam on the right, is almost 2,000 metres higher than that again. This day was the first time where I really felt like I was walking in the highest mountain range in the world. Not just because of the unimaginably tall peaks, but also because of the steeper incline on the trail. Those stairs. This heat, this altitude. Oh, I look like I'm struggling now. <laughs> Tough going. That over there is Fort G, and that's where we're staying tonight. So down, and then back up. I'm feeling it going up. And the fact that the Sherpas come up and down this, carrying like 50 to 100 kilos worth of stuff. Unbelievable. The Sherpa culture is engraved in the history of these mountains. Sherpa is the ethnicity of a group of mountain people who are mainly from Nepal and Tibet. And not only are they incredibly friendly, but also incredibly tough too, as our guide Leela explained to me. We are in Nepalese, we have a uh, hundred different uh, ethnic groups and uh, more than 100 different uh, language. We are now in Everest, it means uh, lots of Sherpas people live here, mostly Sherpa. And they are very smart uh, for trekking and mountaining. And so those people are very tough because of they are living in the mountain regions and they are more facious with altitude. And they are strong figures, bodies, and they are strong for the climbing, trekking, and even working. They are main focusing uh, for climbing. And in this authentic Sherpa village, many of the people see mountaineering and climbing as a way of life. And agriculture too, which I found out the hard way. It's hard work. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is Forte, 3,900 metres high. And it's a very interesting place because a lot of the people that live here, over 70%, are climbers who have climbed some of the highest peaks in the world. My name is Karma Rita Sherpa. I born here. I've been 12 times summit Everest and 14 times in Choyu, one time Manasolu, three times Amadablams. Yeah, that's it. Before I will train in ice climbing, rock climbing, and 6,000 peaks, Alien Peak or Lopuchi. It starts is 6,000 peak is that time is I'm and 16. My son also four times summit Everest and four times Hotse. He is now 26. Wow. My age, yeah. pretty much. Yeah, wow. wow. Meeting Kamarita was inspiring, an elite climber, yet he was so humble. It also put into perspective what the Sherpa people are actually capable of. Especially considering how tough I found the base camp trek, let alone get into the summit of Everest. Another day in paradise, there. Eh? 
climbing from 4G to Dingbochi, 14 kilometers, 500 meters ascent. And the 14 kilometers consisted of amazing views. Good views of Abadablan and Lotse again today. A steep trail. Steep drops up, down, Nipple is flat. And there's a dog here. <laughs> More Sherpa villages. Seeing Mount Everest again. Not just once, twice. Three times Everest. Dog is still here. And a very hot sun. It is hot now. Before we reached Dingboche. Is Dingboche there? Yes. It is Dingboche. It's been a long seven hour hike today. In the very hot sun. We had a long seven hour one yesterday as well. So I think everyone's feeling it a little bit more today. Altitude wise, not feeling it too bad. But maybe the diamox is working. And to help with the altitude, the next day we did another acclimatization hike. Good views to start the day for our acclimatization. Lotse, Island Peak, and Peak 38. Getting up early in the Himalayas is really easy because we're always greeted, I guess. Going from 4,400 meters to 4,900 meters and then back down again to where we stayed last night. And what's over here is an Adablam and standing there just gives a whole different perspective of how big it is and how unclimbable it looks. And Camarita Sherpa, who we met in Fort Jay, has climbed that numerous times as well. It's the second most technical after K2. Jam jam. Jam jam. Jam jam. And as we climbed to the 4,900 meters, the clear skies meant we could see the fifth highest mountain in the world, Makalu. So your climatization is done, 4,900 meters where we are now. And as the weather started to change, we went back down and stayed one more night in Dingboche, where we learnt about a unique type of fuel that's used to heat the tea houses. First they dry the yaktongs and bring it at home and they pour the chimney and make the good fire. Yeah. They pour a little bit oh, yeah. But the next morning, things were starting to get a bit more serious, as our hike on this day would take us into the 5,000 metre zone, all the way to Lobuche. Higher than I'd ever been before. Feeling a little bit worse for it, you. And at this height, there's a real risk to altitude sickness. And on our way from Dingboche to Luboche is the memorial site of people who have died on Everest and in the Kumbu Valley, whether it's the earthquake or the avalanche or way before that, even just trying to submit Everest. definitely hits home how unforgiving and dangerous this landscape really is. You can really feel the eeriness of the site. Especially when it's so high up as well and you've got views of the Himalayas next to the graveyards. And how much the uh scenery has changed over the past few days. Especially when you think about where we were in Lukla. Humid forest. And now we're into like hairy glacial debris with these massive boulders. Look at that. We're walking where the glacier would have been. Yeah. As high up as these mountains as well. But I'm not gonna lie, I am starting to feel it's a little bit lightheaded, a little bit it's not right if you get me. That's what I do believe. How are you guys feeling? Good. <laughs> wait, nearly there. Can't wait for the next meal. <laughs> feeling good? Yes, I'm good, sir. Good. And you? Very good. Feeling good, boys? Absolutely magical. <laughs> All good. We made it. 5,030 meters. Wow. It feels like that as well. And to end the day, we did one last attempt to acclimatise. 
by hiking to the Kumbu Glacier, the highest glacier in the world. We've done a little our acclimatization hike to the Kumbu Glacier and this glacier actually has receded quite a lot and you can hear the glacier moving as well so we're hoping that this hike helps us sleep tonight So today's the day, base camp day Going from 5,000 meters to 5,300 meters, but I'm struggling now. Oh, every step is like takes a review. Things only gonna get worse. I'm excited as well. Though. This is the what the whole track's been leading up to. It's gonna be a good moment when we get to the base camp. I think all nine days hiking up. Tough bits, good bits. It's all been worth it. And we've just seen Everest in all its might. 8,800 meters. <laughs> that's so, that's class. Absolutely amazing. The sheer size of it. Can't contemplate how actually big it is. And at the last village of the trail is where I felt the effects of altitude the most. And Gorak Shep in particular, I think is where we've noticed how the altitude affects us so much more. Even talking now to you, vlogging, but yeah, it's making me out of breath. So I don't know how these lot are doing this. <laughs> Beautiful, eh? Beautiful, I'm so headache. <laughs> headache? Headache. I thought you were a professional leader. I hope. <laughs> it's snowing. Snow's coming now, yeah. yeah. I'm really struggling for oxygen moment. A height beyond <laughs> imaginable for my body. Despite the altitude, fatigue, sleep deprivation and the kumbu cold each of us had, I couldn't help but feel joy, determination, and emotion as we slowly hiked our last couple of kilometers. 3,000 meters in ascent, 150 kilometer hikes from Lukla, all just to get to the base camp of Everest. I was expecting a challenge, but I think uh, it was tougher than what I thought it would be. Nepal is Sunda. Nepal is Sunda. What a brilliant, brilliant trek, trip. It's been couldn't have asked for a better group to do it with. Who was there? Every space camp, 5,364 meters. Not worked. Marcus, get in there. That is. Tough man. We did it. My time in Nepal was nothing short of magic. From the bustling chaos in Kathmandu to the contrasting serenity of the Himalayas. I've never been somewhere where I felt so much. In Buddhism, mantras are repeated to cleanse, enlighten and create spiritual energies. Perhaps that's why the mountains carried such a tangible force. Either through the people reciting the mantras or because the mountains are so close to the gods. But I don't really think it matters why. What matters to me is what I've learned. In similarity to the mantra Om Mani Padme Hum. The Om cleanses away pride and generates kindness. And the connection is easy to see through the generosity and warmth of the Nepalese people. <laughs> the Mani cultivates patience with ourselves and dissolves fleeting pleasures. The same way the trekking taught me to enjoy the there and the now. So far, it's absolutely mind blowing. Don't just look towards the end goal, but appreciate the journey of getting there. Yeah, it. Padme is the sound that promotes perseverance and concentration. My focus became the trek and the mountains, and persevering knowing it was worthwhile, which ties in with the hum 
as the entity that cannot be disturbed. Peace within myself, free of hatred and aggression. The mantra translates as the jewel of the lotus, and repeating Om Mani Padme Hum rids the dirt until the being becomes as compassionate, wise, and as pure as the lotus itself, which is why the mountains relate to me in the same way. Compassion for our planet through appreciation were the best things I've ever seen. Wise through the knowledge and the kindness of the people, and pure as the air I was hiking through. My mind clear of anything but the present moment. Danyabad Nepal for the memories, energies and lessons you have taught me. Hundred and fifty kilometers hiking, three thousand meters in elevation. To base camp. I hope you've enjoyed this series of vlogs. If you have any questions, I'll answer any of them in the comments below. Make sure to like it if you have enjoyed and subscribe for more travel content. And I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching. EBC, done and dusted.